Hi folks, welcome back to the Carver's Woodshop. This is Arlene and I just want to thank you for joining me again. I am coming off a weekend where we're done with the Lancaster show at Millersville. It was a phenomenal time. I just want to make say thank you to Ann and to Andy, Jeff, and um, and Pete for their work in getting that show, especially Andy. I know Andy is our co-chairman to set that whole show up. He's the one that's there early in the morning and getting stuff done, ready. He preps everything so that as a vendor I can just roll in there on Friday, set up, he'll have the tables all set up and you set up and you know he's pretty well the last person that leaves. He's there for the entire three days. Well, actually, we're there Friday setting up, and then Saturday and Sunday is our show. He has done a phenomenal job with his helpers. With uh, I know Jeff was our announcer. He sounds like God on the uh, <laughs> on the intercom, and Jeff does a wonderful job uh, doing the numbers every every hour for our drawing. Um, we had a lot of things going on at the show. We had the spit and whittle. We had uh, we had a feature, Dan Thornton was there as a carver, excellent work, and just excellent carvers all around. In our club, we have very talented people in our club, and I gave you, um, and I want to thank the people that did the video for me. Bob did a video uh, for me, and Fred did too, and he did this, and I'll explain what this is in just a second, and also Dan uh, Finley. Uh, thank you very much guys for taking care of that and, uh, and helping, you know, uh, teaching others about carving. I have yet to found, find a carver that is not willing to do an interview. Now, some of them don't want to be videotaped, personally. Their work, yes, themselves, no, and I certainly understand that. That is not a problem for me. So I usually ask them on the onset, do you want to be videoed or would you rather talk in the background? And um, you know, nine out of ten times, they'll they'll say, "Yeah, I'll talk in the background." So those that are able, you know, you're able to see, um, you know, they they take that extra measure that you can actually meet some of the carvers that are are doing some uh, some of the work. But anyway, this little piece here is a um, is a flower that Fred Henderson. He was one of the uh, people I interviewed in 2011 and this year 2012 there's two videos on him and this particular video um, uh, on his videos there about carousel horses and he was doing a giraffe and we looked at the one he was working on last year and a finished piece that won uh, best I think in the open division last year was the was the horse with the um, with the gold, the white and gold and the flowers. Um, but at the end of the show he came to me and he gave me one of these. Now he does not sell these, okay? He gives these away to people that he knows and um, he he came over and he said I want to give this as an appreciation for doing the interviews with him and I was I was just dumbstruck really from just the, the beauty of this piece. I just love it. I think it is the neatest flower that I've seen. And let me just explain how he did it. He took Tupelo. Now Tupelo is a little bit of a different um, different wood. It's, um, it's a wood that most bird carvers will use because it holds the burning detail very very well. You can cut it with a knife, but your knife really has to be sharp and it will dull your knife very, very quickly. And unlike basswood where you can cut it and and if your knife isn't sharp on Tupelo, it's going to tear it. It's not going to cut it. You almost have to use like a slicing motion with that. That's why uh, high speed grinders and such will love to use Tupelo to make flowers or anything that's really, really thin because it has a certain strength to it as well. Because when you're grinding, you're not putting the pressure on like you would with a knife. You know, if you're cutting something with a knife, you need to put pressure on it. When the grinding wheel is turning, you don't need to put that kind of pressure on a piece. So this is what he did. It's out of one piece. He put a, um, a two-part epoxy on with, a, you know, a little pin on the back. 
and uh, I just thought it was a lovely piece. I just, and his painting is wonderful. If you look at his horses and stuff, uh, just phenomenal. He uses acrylic paint, he says, and then he does a clear coat of some kind of clear coat on it. I don't remember what it was. I, I, I've been trying to absorb all kinds of information at the show, and uh, there's only so much I can retain at one time, but Anyway, he does a phenomenal job with not only his carousel horses, but also with these. Now, this is not his own design. I believe he got this out of a magazine somewhere. And, but isn't that an awesome piece? That, you know, that is just so cool. And see, if you have a diamond cutter on a high-speed grinder, you can make that nice and round. Um, make sure you have the proper stuff safety wise like for your mask and stuff because Tupelo is not good to get it, any of that stuff in your lungs but I just thought it was a neat piece and I want to thank Fred for giving me one of these that's awesome it's just it just did my heart good to see that I I really just was in awe of his artwork and his and the piece itself is so elegant it really is isn't that neat I just think it's phenomenal especially how small this portion is and how thin and Tupelo has that strength to it that you can do that now I'm not saying you couldn't do it with basswood absolutely you could uh, but you may have to treat it with something to harden it a little bit especially these things you know the, the petals that they have um, but it's a wonderful piece so I just wanted to share that with you I wanted to thank you for coming uh, I met the neatest people this past weekend. I, I'm, I meet neat people every time I go to a show. But this show is a little special. And we're going to have a, and I'll explain that later, because the, the one couple that came, we're going to do a little story on them, I believe. And uh, our club president, Pete, is going to do a story on him. And they're going to put it on in our newsletter, and I have their permission to put it on my blog. So once that's all done for the March issue, I'll make sure to post that on my blog. Okay, folks, thanks for joining me. Of course, I have another project ready in my head to go um, forward and do another project with you folks that I think you might enjoy. It's something a little different, but I think you'll, you'll find it to be a, a lot of fun. Okay, folks, take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, and thanks again for making our show a success. Bye-bye.